Hi, everybody. We are back. It is Friday, and boy, do we have a treat for you. We have the Lisa Zachary here from Paper Wonders. Hey, Lisa. Hi. How are you? Good, good. We are so happy to have you here. Um, this conversation today is one that I am sure a lot of you all have thought about, um, especially considering you know the different restrictions with COVID. So we definitely want to. Hey, Randy. We definitely want to. Um, this is this is going to be a good one, a juicy one. So make sure that you have your. It might be a little too early for wine, but um, have a little something so we can uh, we can chat about this. So just a little bit about Lisa. Lisa Renee Zachary is the founder and creative director of Papered Wonders, Inc. She has curated the gift of creativity and fueled it with a passion to build a business that creates custom stationery that is not only admired, but desired around the globe. As a female entrepreneur and single mom, Lisa used her expertise and knowledge to not only serve her clients, but also to inspire other entrepreneurs as they seek to make their mark in the business industry. Lisa's designs are in incomparable and unparalleled. She credits her unique ability to surpass her client's expectations to the master creator and is inspired daily by God's given grace. She is a proud mother of one daughter, Kennedy Renee, and it is the moments spent with her that she treasures the most. Everybody, welcome, 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 um, Lisa Zachary. Thank you so much. Hey, so thank excited. You. So, Lisa, please tell us how you got into this industry. Ha! Ah, okay, first, I wanted to give a disclaimer. I am in the office today, and as I'm in this office, my daughter is trying to get in the doors. <laughs> um, Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful that you said that because I'm trying to fight off mine. <laughs> door, <Front> door. <laughs> Sorry, this these kids are mom. crazy. Look, we understand. I'm in because we have so many teacher orders that um, we're sending out today. So excuse all the junk in the background. I know we're so used to having these pretty, you know, offices or whatever, but I'm in my office, so there's nothing pretty about it in here. That's right. You, um, look, you working, so. Exactly. so okay. um, So I started Paper Wonders back in 1995. Woo. Um, I was I was working in corporate America and um, I was doing underwriting as an insurance uh, marketing director. Um, and I was always the go-to person. All of my friends, my family called me for invitations, for creating greeting cards, anything that was paper related I was doing. Um, and at that time I had a lot of agents um, that were my clients. And so during the holidays, I would create a lot of um, holiday greeting cards for them. Mm -hmm. um, and then one of my um, friends said to me, you really need to start a business. Um, and at that time, I mean, it was a great hobby. I loved paper. I've always been pa passionate about paper. I'm the kid that makes my own Valentine's Day cards in, in mm -hmm. elementary school. And all the kids are like, you are always doing the most. <laughs> that was <good. laughs> So um, I started the business actually as a means of getting tax write-offs, honestly, because I was making plenty of money in corporate America, but I had no, I didn't have a house. I was living in an apartment. I didn't have a child at the time. Um, so I needed some help to get somebody's Uncle Sam off of my back. So right. The first five years, um, you know, it was just minimal business, but it was great opportunities that I was given. Um, and then when I got pregnant with my daughter, um, I traveled for my job five days a week. And I knew that it wasn't possible for me to um, keep doing that with my child. And I could have left her with my grandparents who raised me. Um, and my friends would have jumped in and, and helped, you know, around the clock until we made something happen. But the Lord just said, you know, it's time to jump out of the boat. You got to do this thing. It's now or never. Um, so in 2001, I um, walked into my um, office and my whole staff thought that I was just completely crazy. Um, but I quit. 
And I didn't have, you know, a whole bunch of money saved up. I didn't have any leads. I didn't even have a client. Um, but I knew that I was passionate about paper. And I knew that God had told, had instructed me to walk this path. Um, so that's what I did. So first few years, tough, really tough. I mean, as people say, you know, the first two to five years are, are going to be crazy. And they were crazy. But I, I'm, I'm a, a woman of faith. And I knew that God was going to see me through. And every time... I thought that I wanted to give up. He would give me a reason to keep going. And uh, here we are getting ready to celebrate 20 years next year. Um, so I'm very excited about um, everything that I've been blessed to do, the challenges, the work that I've put in over the years. Um, but I honestly have to tell you that I'm not as excited as I could be um, because we haven't progressed in the industry. Right. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, do you care to elaborate a little bit more on that? Sure. Um, so I, I just feel like um, it, it is my belief um, that after 20 years of business that um, I should be um, or our industry should be um, looked at differently. But unfortunately, because of the ways of the world and because we're still in this crisis um, of judging people by their skin color, um, we're still suffering in, in, in every arena of our lives. But since we are here and we're discussing the wedding industry, I mean, we right. know our, our counterparts are making, you know, way more money than we are just because of the opportunities that they've been afforded um, mm -hmm. because of their skin, um, right. the client base that they service, the the list that they are able to get on, um, right. you know, all, all of that is dictated according to the color of their skin. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, we have the resumes and we have the book of work and the portfolio um, to show that we're just as great and, and in, in a lot of cases, even greater than some of those people that have been afforded those opportunities. So I'm really hoping that, you know, with the change that's going on in the world, um, that we're able to um, see that same change. What, what, what would I look like having been in this business for 20 years and not be a catalyst, not speak out, not help um, lead the way to bridge the gap? Um, right. I, I just really want us to you know, do some self-evaluation um, so that we can give grace to people. Um, I mean, we're, 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 our culture is so quick to cancel people and, and people, yeah. make, they pick, people make mistakes and, and some people don't realize the errors of their mistakes. So, you know, as a Christian first, I'm, I'm going to walk in, in love and, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to make mistakes. I, I mean, I've made mistakes. We all make mistakes, but we can't harbor unforgiveness, you know, forever. I mean, I just challenge everybody on both sides of this to, you know, reach out to extend the olive branch, you know, to see where we're, we're more the same than we are different. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do to push this industry forward. I mean, like I think about things like um, like this year, the balloon artistry has just been wild. I mean, like, loaded. We're doing with these balloons. I'm like, man. So if we mm -hmm. can think about um, taking things like that for an example of how we can cross the the race line to if we come together how many more ideas we can have how many more trends we can start or right. how many more different things that we can do since people are often saying you know all weddings look the same everything is just the same you know it right. really isn't but i think afforded more opportunities we could show on both sides how we can work together bridge that gap and, and make the industry better, not just for us, but for our clients. 
Mm-hmm. And, and that's yeah. what it's about. At the end of the day, we, we're, we're designing events um, about love and, and love sees no color. Right. So, so right. we, you know, it's up to us, you know, to, to do better. And, and whether that's collectively or individually, we have, we have definitely have to, to check ourselves. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a Michael Jackson. Start with the man in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or <laughs> if you're a Christian, start with Psalms 91. Check that heart, Lord. <laughs> and then, you know, and then we can move forward from there. And, I, and, and, and I, what I really want people to understand is this is not a sprint. It's a marathon, mm-hmm. just like weight loss. You don't, you can take a pill and lose 10 pounds in 10 days. And I guarantee you're going to gain those 10 pounds back. Maybe a little bit more. Exactly. But if (laughs) if you change your diet, change your eating habits, you know, incorporate a little bit of exercise and work at that day after day, then you'll see over time where you've lost weight, where you're feeling better and you're looking better. We can't just expect people to change overnight right? and, and be judgmental when they do say, hey, let's open up our vendor list. You're right. We're, we're wrong for not having more um, people of color on our um, preferred vendor list. Mm-hmm. So they let us in, and then oh, they only let us in because you know they want to feel better about themselves. You I mean, can't say that. No, we we gotta do better. We gotta the the judgment part of it. We have to leave out of it. We gotta let people walk this path the way they they think they should. We can lead them you know, as best as we can, but we just got to, this is a day by day process. The wedding industry wasn't built overnight. It's not going to change overnight. That's right. That's right. That's right. I don't want to harp on on that whole situation because we could talk about that, you know, all day. Absolutely. Because I can tell you some horror stories of how I've been, you know, discriminated against. I mean, I've, I've talked to clients over the phone and, they're ready to pay their deposit. And then when we get to the studio to meet and they realize that I'm black, then all of a sudden the budget changes and we don't really right. have that much, you know, we thought we were going to be able to spend that, but we're not. So, you know, give us some time to think about it. And then they, they never call back. So, I mean, we've right. all had, I, I mean, I'm sure we've all had those types of experiences, but um, mm-hmm. I just want to encourage, since you have the audience here, I just want to encourage everybody you know, to do better, to be better, you know, just choose to seek one thing that you can do every day to be better in your business and to be better in the business, the industry. And then I think we can, you know, we can push the pin forward. But let's talk about uninviting these guests. (laughs) Yes. So first and foremost, first and foremost, talk to us about what your experience as a stationer has been since COVID has stepped on the scene. What kind of challenges, what are you seeing, you know, in, in, in the world of stationary? Oh my gosh. It has like been all over the place, honestly, as I'm sure it has been for um, a lot of people. Um, I, I can speak from what has happened to us and I, I'm in a couple of stationary groups. So, I mean, I see, you know, the things that are happening to other people. And and one of the things that hurts me so much is, you know, I've seen a lot of businesses go under in in these last three months. I mean, I've seen people just say, you know, they can't hold out. They can't, you know, whether they were able to get government assistance with the PPP or the EIDL, you know, Mm -hmm. or not. I mean, a, a lot of people just are like, this is a pacifier, but it's not going to sustain me until wedding events come back next year, you know? So, so that's been the the very hurtful part um, on the business side, but then on the, on the brides and the celebrant side, should I say, um, it's been very hurtful to watch their wedding dreams, you know, just kind of disappear. Because whether it was a date that they chose that was very special to them or um, the fact that they can't, um, celebrate with the amount of people that they want. 
I mean, it, it's just so much happening um, on both sides. Um, but I, I would say personally, um, we've been blessed that um, all of our clients pretty much have just um, postponed until next year. Um, yeah. I did receive an email um, yesterday or last night um, about a client that is going to cancel um, mainly because she has also been affected by COVID and her and her fiance are unemployed. So now right. they can no longer afford the wedding um, that they were dreaming of. So, I mean, it's very, it, our, our industry is already a very emotional um, job anyway. I mean, because you have the highs and lows just when everything is, is going great. The stress of winning the deadlines and the timelines that we have to meet, you know, I mean, it's already very stressful. Then you add COVID, I mean, it, it's just really by the grace of God that we're all still just saying, I mean, it's just, it's just been crazy. So, um, I mean, I, I, I hope that this is one of the times where um, a lot of stationaries, especially custom stationaries, I think that has made it a little bit easier for some clients because you have a relationship there or at least a relationship through your planner where right. you can call and, and kind of talk through options of, you know, what you should do and how you should move o move forward as opposed to, I mean, I feel so bad for the celebrants that don't have a planner that may right. have used an online vendor. Um, right. for Stationary, you know, like wh who's giving them direction? Like, what do they do? What do they say? Right. right. You know, and you really have to be careful about your words. So, um, honestly, we've seen a, a array of different things. Like, a lot of my clients that have wedding websites, that was the greatest thing ever. I mean, I always yeah. try to encourage them to do that anyway, even if they password protected because they yeah. don't it, you know, out there for people to see. I think it's a great way to communicate with your guests. And this has proven to be because there's some of the websites where you can actually email your guests from the website. So right. you're not having to text or email them from your personal address and people are bugging you about, you know, are you going to move forward? Are you not? Why are you canceling? You know, you kind of can put that to the side, it goes to the website and, and you're good. But with the wedding website, we, you know, we can recreate them. We can redesign the page to say, hey, you know, we've decided that we're going to postpone and we'll get back to you, you know, when we have a set date. Um, you know, mm -hmm. some want to go as far as to say, you know, due to COVID and we want to be, you know, careful and we care about our guests and our family. So we don't want to gather until we know that it's safe, um, right. you know. And then some people have been fortunate enough to to postpone or you know reschedule their dates already. So they have a new date in 2021. So hey, resave this date because you know can't make it happen right now due to COVID. But next year we're going you know full force. Um, my, right. my concern probably more is about the people that are still in limbo. Like we had some spring weddings that postponed to the fall and now right. they're having to postpone till next year. So that's, you know, kind of been a, a serious challenge. So what, what do you do for a, what's the best fence straddling stationary thing to do? If you're getting married in September, you know, here we are, you know, you should order your invitations, you know, now. <laughs> right. but you know, you should like, it's a great possibility that it won't happen, but it's also a possibility that it could happen. Right. So what is the best thing that they should do? Should they go ahead and get their invitations? Should, you know, they leave the date off the invitation? Like what can they, what's the best way to, straddle both fences so that way they're either on time or they haven't lost right. as, you know, as much money as they right. could. I would suggest if you're a fall wedding, 
especially September, because now is the time, you know, you, you should be working on your invitations to go out in, you know, the end of June for a September wedding. So I would suggest working on the invitation. And if you're, especially if you're working with a custom stationer, just put it on hold, like get it designed, ready to go to print. Maybe in a couple of weeks, you'll be ready to make a decision about whether you're going to move forward or not. Because I think we're back to a June date where some things may open up a little bit more, perhaps. Right. If, if you have the finances and you're okay with printing, I would say go ahead and print. I wouldn't leave the date off. I would print. And then if something happens, then you can always put an insert card in. The okay. date, you know, the date has changed, no scratching out anything, no <laughs> trying to fill in with a calligrapher, you know, but just go ahead and I mean, people. I think that uh, here's another situation where we have to give grace. This is unprecedented times. You know, we can't be judging what people's invitations situation ends up being um, because there's so much uncertainty. But you don't have the money to spend in case you don't have the wedding, Mm -hmm. then just don't print. And I, and I would say this in this time, which I never would say this any other time, but in this time, I would say for a wedding, it would be okay if you went digital. Oh. I would. I would. Be, because mm-hmm. what I don't want people to do is spend thousands of dollars on invitations. The wedding get canceled. You can't get that back. It's not like a venue where you can reschedule that date and your money can be moved forward. If you come back for a reprint, even if I give you a, a, a my price on um, and not a retail price, there's still money involved. Right. So if you're un- if you're uncertain, if you don't really have that money to lose, yeah, I would say take the digital route. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just- just in, just in this situation. I mean, so with the people that have postponed or rescheduled, we're either updating their wedding websites or we're designing custom digital um, messages for them to send out um, either through an RSVP service or if they want to do it through their personal email or texting to say, you know, we're not really sure what we're going to do. Um right kind of hold this date, but you might need to think about this other date, you know, mm-hmm. so whatever the terminology is that works for you, I think mm-hmm. having somebody on hand is, is a great way to go. If you mm-hmm. don't, if you don't have a custom stationaire, say you use like minted, um, yeah. they, they have things, they, they have service offerings for resaving the date or, you know, changing the date or postponing, you know, you just have to feel comfortable about whatever that verbiage is that, that you want to use. But I wouldn't get into like, I'm telling my clients, don't let's spend money. that We don't have to like, I mean, I I love paper and I want you to give me your money, but I don't want (laughs) you spending money for no reason, you know, right. Right. a way to get around it like you you need to call off the wedding but yet you want to tell that there's a new date so right. call off the wedding or postpone the wedding digitally and then if you want to send out another save the date for next year then that's fine but you don't have to keep paper 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 everything because it's just too much going on yeah, yeah. i mean I think it, take a look at your um, guest list and the demographics and, you know, are most of your guests young? Are they gonna, you know, the, the digital is going to appeal to them anyway. I mean, what I will say is that the mail has gotten a lot better, um, during COVID than it was prior to, I mean, like I'm shipping stuff and it's getting there in the next day or the day after, as opposed to weeks at a time that it was taking, you know, prior to. So, I mean, I, I, I definitely think that um, 
you know, you just have to weigh your options and, and, and what feels good to you. But to have somebody to talk it through with, I think, you know, helps. Yeah. 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 I mean, and and brides who may not have a planner that they've hired and they're just doing it on their own, they can always reach out to a planner and say, hey, can we do a, con you know, a, can I pay you for a consultation? You know, yeah. stationary as well. So yeah. I mean, yeah. I can speak for other people, but I certainly have spoken to some people that are not my clients. Yeah. But they they need direction on, you know, how to move forward. I have, if I, if I get into having to do some work, then that's yeah. going to cost you. But if you pick up the phone, that would be the same as you calling me to ask me about how much something costs or our process. I have no problem yeah. with sharing that information because you need somebody that can, you know, direct, yeah. you know? And I think, I think that it's important for, for people to understand, like, wedding vendors at this particular point in time like we're super understanding and super welcoming and if you have questions about things feel free to call us as long as it doesn't require us to do any work right. i think that we, you know we're open to a conversation a quick conversation that may help you save money or just help you think things through so i think that that's a really really great point so i'm taking a step back uh, so the you know a couple has realized that they have to move their wedding date. Um, mm -hmm. Talk to us about you know how soon they should alert their guests, um, how they should alert their guests, paper or digital, you know. And and like you said, you know, there's there's demographics. Is there a way to again straddle the fence and maybe get some paper for older people and and send digital to the younger people? Um, yeah. What should they do once they you know, come to the conclusion that they have to change their date. So I'm going to use my, I have a September wedding. Um, so I'm going to use her as a, as an example. Um, she's in California and trying to decide, you know, was trying to decide for weeks, you know, what they were going to do. Were they going to move forward or were they going to postpone? Just kind of, you know, listening to the shelter in place orders and, you know, the social distancing and how things are going to happen. And I want to say she probably has like 200 guests. So, you know, in reality, we know 200 people aren't gathering, you know, in September, not right. safely. I don't, feel like they would. Mm -hmm. So anyway, she finally made the decision um, that she would postpone. Mm -hmm. So um, she had a wedding website. So I designed a new cover page for the website to say that they were postponing. She used that website um, to email the guest because a lot of people had already replied based on the save the date going out. Mm -hmm. So her invitations, which would go out, you know, like I said, the end of next month, she wanted to go ahead and tell them as quick as possible because people are already making hotel reservations. Right. You might've gotten your flight already. So I need a quick, not waiting on the mail. I need quick response. So I update the website. I give her the graphics so she can text it to the yeah. people. And then she's telephoning her older guests to make sure oh, that they're yeah. aware that, mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to happen. It may not be personally her, but somebody, mm -hmm. because a lot of, of celebrants are very emotional um, and don't want to have the conversation. So having a planner or having your maid of honor or your cousin or somebody that can help you um, to make these difficult phone calls, I think, you know, is a great way to go. So it would be the same thing as if we needed to call you because your RSVP was for two people and you wrote six. Somebody yeah. call you and tell you all these six people can't come. <laughs> right. Tough conversation, but certainly, you know, needs to be had. So um, I think she moved her date to, you know, like spring. So mm -hmm. I told her, I think the best thing to do would be to handle everything digitally in the fall, we'll send out a new save the date for the new date. And then the eight week period for the invitations, whenever that date is, then we'll just go back to our regular schedule. Right. So she personally wanted to, you know, send paper again, which I love. And I think that's totally fine. I just mm -hmm. don't want it to be, you know, like I wouldn't have wanted her to send paper to cancel or postpone and then paper again to set the new date, you know? 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I did, I think I see somebody asking and I wanted to answer that oh, question yeah. about the um, invitation for detail shots. So yes, um, one of my clients that did um, do a digital uh, invitation because she wanted to go, at, she, she canceled her original wedding and wanted to go ahead with um, her family to um, do a small wedding of like eight people at our home. Mm-hmm. So she still wanted an invitation for her um, detail shots, for her photos and for her keepsake. Mm-hmm. I'm totally down with that. So yeah, you, you know, whether it's one or it's five or you know, you, both moms, the grandparents or whatever you need. I mean, I totally think that that's fine. And I, I, And even if, they say they want it with the original date they were planning to get married and not the new date, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. However you want to handle it. I mean, I think that is not out of the ordinary to ask, you know, for something um, to um, give you as a keepsake, whether you have to pay for it or or not. Um, yeah. for detail shots. And to lead, making sure that you share those pictures with the stationer too. <laughs> <laughs> so that they can use those pictures too. That's not really so, a problem to have. So, but yes, but definitely share. But I mean, I, you know, I think I, going off on a, on a sidebar, I think building relationships with planners and photographers are very important for that very reason. Because yeah. all the photographers that I work with on a regular, they know that I'm going to package it all up in a box. So nobody has to remember to tell the bride to bring and la la la. Nope. I keep one of everything on purpose so that I can have that box ready and I give it to the planner. Here you are. Make sure you get the photographer to shoot it and then you can give it to the bride or either send it back to me. And that's a really smart thing to do. Yeah. Um, Especially if you're trying to build you know, pictures, you know, your portfolio of pictures and you want to get them in, you know, real time or, you know, Stanley Bab is really good about taking stationary pictures with shoes and things like that. Um, so I, 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 I think that that's great where you just send a separate thing and the planner can just handle that and we're not harassing the bride. I love that. So Lisa, <laughs> here we are. Gonna, we're going to move forward with this wedding anyway. Mm-hmm. But, but we have to cut our guest list due to restrictions. We've already sent out invitations. What are we supposed to do? So prior to COVID, <laughs> it would be totally unethical. <laughs> and out of etiquette for you to uninvite anybody. And this is what I always tell my, my celebrants. When you send that save the date and it says formal invitation to follow, right. you have to invite them to the wedding. You yes. can't say, oh, too many people said they want to come or... Um, you know, I didn't expect all of this or something happened and we have to cut our budget. No, no, no. So I encourage you when you're doing save the dates, if you haven't really had that budget talk and really know exactly which direction you're going in, leave that line off so that you're not insulting people by saying the invitation is to follow and it doesn't. You're still wrong. But at least you're not saying, I'm definitely inviting you. After COVID, all bets are off. Right. So to me, this falls more on the guest being empathetic and sympathetic to the situation more than it does on the celebrants. If if your state says that you can't have more than 10 people or you can't have more than 25 people, um participating, then I don't understand why anybody in their right mind would be offended if they were not invited. We have to give grace. So it is totally fine for you to digitally uninvite them, but I would 
for the sake of etiquette, I would make phone calls. I mean, I, I just think that that's the only way to, to make it right, even though it's not your fault. But I would just get a team of people, hey, you call five people, you call five people, and we explain to them, you know, we're going to move forward. If, if your wedding is, you know, like say you're getting married in June, um, maybe the end of June, and we have time to send something out, then you could send something out saying that due to um, COVID and CDC guidelines, we can only have X amount of people at the wedding. We really want to move forward with our wedding. You know, perhaps, you know, we're going to do an intimate um, celebration at home with our family or whatever. And next year, we look forward to celebrating with you. If you're going to, you know, do a celebration later, that's fine. The only thing is, if that thing gets lost in the mail, then they don't know. So that's why I said the phone call. Because what you don't want people doing is wondering, you know, whether your wedding is going to happen or not. And the only way that we know right. for sure is if we verbally communicate with them. Right. So what do you say? Due, do you say to, the due to COVID restrictions and CDC guidelines, we can only have 25 people at our wedding. We are moving forward with an intimate celebration and we look forward to celebrating with you next year. I don't feel like you need to give anybody uh, any other explanation. And I would mm -hmm. venture to say that a lot of people are going to use that excuse and it not be true. They just want to yeah. cut their guest list because they see now as an opportunity for me to have the wedding that I really want to have with only 20 people. Right. So right, right. whether it's true or not, I mean, I, I just think that we have to have an honest, conversation about you know ha what's happening so if you have time and you want to you want to mail something out i think it can say the same thing um mm -hmm. i I've, I've actually seen a lot of people post on facebook which i'm sure maybe there's a graphic designer involved because they they've been you know pretty spectacular um post with a picture of the couple you know saying that you know we really this date is special to us we don't want to lose this date so we're going to do this now and we'll see you next year. Um, yeah. So whatever form of communication you can do where nobody is left out because you don't want people speculating or, you know, Elaney, you know that my wedding is canceled, but uh, James is invited and he didn't get a call. I mean, or he didn't get anything in the mail. So he doesn't know. Right. So, I mean, I, I, they're very difficult conversations. And I think it just depends on, you know, where you are there. I know a lot of celebrants that are OK with, you know, what happened. They're like, you know, everything happens for a reason. I'm OK with it. You know, we're going to get married at the courthouse, you know, and, you know, we can worry about that celebration next year. They're fine. But there are some that are truly devastated about what has happened. And they're the ones that won't be able to make the phone calls. They, they'll need some help. So in this time, we have to, as a team, undergird, you know, our, our clients and, and help support them in any way possible. I've been on the team to call the RSVP people that show out. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to jump on that team to say, you know, I'm calling on behalf of Elena Walker and, um, they have decided to, um, they're going to have an intimate celebration and postpone their wedding until next year. Um, when they have a new date, you'll receive something in the mail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why are you calling me instead of them? <laughs> <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I just think that it's, it's, a, it's a difficult walk for, for everybody involved. Yeah. Um, what is your advice on who to kick to the curb and who not to kick to the curb? So let's go back to my advice that I give all of my celebrants from the very beginning. Because mm -hmm. we know that guest list is the toughest thorn in our flesh every <laughs> single time. I tell my clients, if you are getting married, or whatever kind of celebration you're having. Let's just say that. But I, I mean, typically it's a bride. We're talking weddings, so, or, you know, 
whatever you want to be called, a, a celebrant. If you look out and you see cousin Jenny and you're like, oh my God, I'm so glad that she made it. She goes on the list. If you look yeah. out and you see Uncle Joe, you're like, oh, I, I can't even believe that he came to my wedding. He shouldn't be on the list. Right. If if you can go, if if I can make or break your day, whether my presence will make or break your day, or or mm -hmm. I won't say break because we're not inviting people that break. If I can make your day, but if I don't make a difference let's say yeah and kick kick them to the curb but if you're talking about going from 200 down to 25 i mean mm -hmm. you're pretty much just saying you know my immediate family right. and that and right. that's it so i mean I, I don't think that it gets so so tough when um what is that Right. That that's what I'm saying. The excuse can't be for a very small and intimate celebration. Well, I mean, I think that 50 is still a very small and intimate celebration. I mean, if you had 150 people and you're going down to 50, that's still to me an intimate celebration. But if you don't consider it intimate, I mean, I, I still think the the um the way that you dictate your list, obviously you, you're going to start with your immediate family and then you build from there. And I'm building on the people that are here going through the fire with me right now, as opposed to the people that my mom made me invite or my dad made me invite or my coworkers that, you know, I don't really care to see anyway. Um, so 50 for some people is their immediate family. Do you think 50 is it? Um, well, no, but what, what happens if like, like there's some states where let's say they say a hundred people, mm -hmm. uh, not, you know, and now we're just, you know, we're cutting 50 to, you know, from 150 to go to a hundred. So you can't say, okay, I'm having an intimate wedding in a sense. No, I mean, you can't say that, but you can say, you can still say due to CDC guidelines and social distancing, I have to cut my numbers. So, that, that's still a fair and and honest statement. So the choosing is going to be a tough decision between you and 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 your fiance, obviously. I mean, but and I think that's going to be. Uh, I mean, I can't even imagine having to figure out who the fifty are. You know that that you cut, and I'm sure that some people's feelings are going to be very very hurt. Um, but again, I go back to you know, showing grace, but I, I would still lead with, because the only reason why this is happening is because of COVID and CDC guidelines. So if they say a venue can host 10, six people every 300 feet or whatever it is that they're saying, I don't get all those guidelines because I don't do floor plans. So if a hundred people can fit in there safely, then you're still being honest by saying, I, I can only get a hundred. So start with those people that you made you you put on the list last. Right, right. But I still think that they deserve a a phone call um and not just a a, a you know blow by the wind email that says, you know, you can't come. Right, right. Um do you think that people will be understanding or do you think that there will be some people that will be offended? Um, honestly, I think that the majority of the people will be understanding, mm -hmm. but it's those people that won't be that are going to make it a more difficult process for you. What mm -hmm. I will say is, you know, because of everything that's happening in the world and not even the, the race thing, but just because we've been in the house for three months not making any connection. When we go out, we can't touch, we can't talk. And we're not just talking about strangers, like our families, you know, like say your, your family is a, an essential worker. So they're not, you know, quick to come home and hug and embrace and all of this, because, you know, we have to look out for each other's safety. So everybody is 
very, very intense. People's feelings are getting hurt. Like, I mean, I stepped on your toe and I used to be able to say, excuse me, and that was okay. But now you're pulling out a gun ready to kill me because I stepped on your toe. So, I mean, I think that people are going to be insensitive. That's just reality. But yeah. I think that there will be, you know, this is like what we say for our clients. For every Bridezilla, there's, you know, 10 more that remind us of why we do this every day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for every person that gets mad at you, you'll have the family member that's going to love and, and send you flowers and, you know, still send you a wedding gift, even though they can't be there. I mean, it's, it's a tough way to, to walk, but it's reality right now. Right. Um, everyone, if, you know, if you're tuning in, thank you guys so much. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely drop them into, um, you know, the message feed. We're going to get them. Lisa's going to answer the questions. Um, what an icky thing to have to call someone and say, I'm sorry. I, you know, I can't, you know, you can't come to the, to the wedding. I love the idea of the bride not doing it and having the mother, the father, you know, the, the maid of honor, the whomever to, to handle that. And, and I can see how someone may say, well, why isn't she calling me? She'll call right. you later. Yeah. <laughs> she's not calling you. She's having to reschedule her wedding. So she doesn't really want to, you know, a, a lot of them don't even want to face it. And I think the ones that are dragging their feet, that's, that's the real reason why, because I mean, just think, you, you finally met the, the person of your dreams, whether, you know, you've had a long term relationship or not, but you finally, you know, came together, had a plan, this dream wedding. You've been looking at this Pinterest board every day and every you, day you ordered your gown and now we closed outside is closed. Outside. And then when it opens, it's, you know. You can come, but everybody can't come. So, I mean, I, I just think that I try to do my best in communicating with um, with my friends and my family. Um, I'm constantly sharing etiquette advice um, mm -hmm. so that people do know how to react. Like, I mean, in ordinary circumstances, I've seen people like show completely out about not being invited to a wedding. And I have yeah. to remember the people that this is not that this choice is not personal it's a financial choice mm -hmm. so if somebody says i have fifty thousand dollars to spend on my wedding and the planner says with all these things that you want to do you can only invite 125 people and have enough money to you know get the dance floor to get these chandeliers to get right. this venue you know whatever so why do we have to be so mean and antagonizing to people because they choose to have the kind of celebration they want to and they're not right. able to invite everybody? My, right. my goddaughter got married and um, her father said to her, here's $60,000. You figure it out. I'm not giving you not one more dime. Whatever you want to do, I'm cool with it. So people were in an uproar because they didn't get invited. And she said, if I didn't invite you, charge it to my pocket and not my heart. Right. Amanda has another awesome question. I'm going to click her question so that way you can see it. And I got to grab my charger. But okay, Amanda, no <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> can you, you know, see it? Uh-huh. To re-invite oh, okay. someone, for example, the couple reduces their guest count, but the RSVP is lower than they expected. So can they add more guests at the last minute? Yes, you definitely can. And that happens even when we're not in COVID because a lot of times um, I, I, I try to tell people to shy away from the A and the B list. Um, okay. But if you make a B list, don't send them an invitation until you know that they can be invited. And if you wait too long, where it is a last minute decision, I think that it's totally perfectly fine to call them and say, hey, you know, I've always really wanted you to be at my wedding, but I had a limited guest count. Now that our RSVPs didn't come up, we do have some extra seats. If you would like to celebrate with us, we'd love to have you. I think that's perfectly fine. 
I mean, again, we're going to be in a situation where somebody may be offended. Oh, so now I can come. But <laughs> you win some, you lose some. <laughs> <laughs> just come on and be quiet. Just, just come on anyway. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Wow. Wow. Um, they, Lisa, wow. This this has been some great information. Um, what kind of bad situations have you experienced? Like just negative or, you know, just just what are some of the difficulties that have come about that you've experienced personally um, with this whole COVID-19 and um, yeah, just with, with everything, basically everything that's going on? So based on stationary or you mean me personally? In general, just in general. Okay, I'm based on stationary, I mean, I'm very thankful that we haven't had any terrible situations. I mean, we've mm -hmm. been able to, you know, consult our clients through the progress. Um, you know, everybody is pretty much rescheduling. Like I said, we did have that one cancellation and I haven't dealt with that just yet, but it doesn't really affect me. So right. um, that has been fine. But I will say that this has been for me. It has been a great experience. Um, the time that I have had to spend with my daughter at home, um, not you know on the gerbil wheel like this, like we do in the industry, it's been right. great. I mean, I don't like the fact that I can't go to the beach, but outside of that, I just haven't been complaining. Um, I, I've, I've really just tried to stay focused um, work on helping other entrepreneurs with their businesses. I've been doing a lot of coaching during this time and, and we offer coaches coaching for creatives and not just stationers. So mm -hmm. um, we've, we've been helping a lot of people try to get things together. Um, spending a lot of time on Netflix, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> which I never do. I'm not really a TV person. Um, like that, but I've just, you know, kind of been watching what everybody else is watching, except I ain't watching that Tiger King thing. Y'all ain't. Lisa. No way. Lisa. I'm my life with that. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> and my daughter keeps trying to make me do all these TikTok challenges. So, you know, <laughs> I've done that too, and I'm done with that. So, um, but, but I've really been um, praying for our community because. You know, we've been attacked so disproportionately um, with COVID, um, yeah. whether it's, you know, we didn't believe that it was real at first. We didn't take safety precautions, pre-existing conditions, whatever the case, you know, um, we've lost a lot of church members um, due to due to COVID. So it, um, April has lost some family members. Um, so that part has been very, very devastating. Um, but outside of that, I mean, I think that, um, that the quiet time, it, it, it could be used in such a, a resourceful way if we would do that. Um, mm -hmm. and then, you know, going back to the industry situation, I mean, I think with the quiet time, if we would just use this time to strategize yeah. and, you know, come together and figure out what it is that we want to, to move um, our industry for it together and not just, yeah. uh, you know, the black industry. I mean, I think that it would be um, uh, good for all of us. So. Right. Right. I, 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 no. Go ahead. I, 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 because I, I work on both sides and because I am a graphic designer, I've been able to, you know, keep doing some work, um, which has been good. I mean, I love helping um, people look good, whether in their digital presence or on paper. I mean, that is a passion of mine. It's no needing you putting out raggedy graphics when, you know, there are people around that are ready to help you. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's always about, you know, people's willingness to um, ask for help. Right. Right. You know. Talia really encourages you to watch Tiger King. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll do a lot. Of it. It's good. Not, nope. <laughs> it's okay. I understand. I understand. Just stay in the dark with all the memes out there. Just stay in the dark. <laughs> and what was that other thing? The the birds or whatever that came out years ago. I didn't watch that. Yeah. That's it. 
y'all are crazy. And then I saw a meme that said something about um, all of y'all that watched this and now look at y'all. Yeah. I yeah. Ain't <laughs> I that no was idea. a good movie too. That was, you just passing up on all the good stuff. Nope. Completely. <laughs> so Lisa, how can people find you? I am Papered Wonders on all platforms, on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Lisa Zachary. Um, you can email me, Lisa Zachary at paperedwonders.com. Make sure you put the E-D and the S. Um, but I'm always available. Shoot me a message if you want to talk. I am actually um, getting ready to post a message um, so that I am extending the olive branch and helping. Um, I am going to offer an hour of consulting to any creative that's interested. Um, you just have to send me an email, um, get on my calendar for next week. Um, and we're going to you know, work it out, whatever it is you need. If you're a stationary and you need some direction, you need some resources, you can call me. If you're just getting started and you need to know, you know, do I need a business license? Where do I get an employee tax ID? Um, you know, who can I call for accounting? What do I need? Whatever you need. I've been doing this for 25 years. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you an hour of my time. That That's awesome. That so. That's awesome. That is because that, you're not watching Tiger King. You have this time exactly. to do that. I'm not watching it. So that's my company called Young Grasshoppers. So, um, but you can email me at Lisa at Paper Wonders, and um, I can connect you to all of that. But um, it's been great. Thank you so much for this opportunity, Elena. I really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. To end yeah. my week. This has been a long, rough week. It has. Um, so this is certainly the highlight of the week, and I really appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm I'm so glad that that you came on, especially after the last couple of days and oh. everything that's been going on. It's been intense, and I mean, who would have known that in the midst of you know trying to get people ready to go back to events, you know, during this time COVID, we'd enter into the next phase of 2020, the next disastrous phase of 2020, which is now um, the, the riots and the pro, well, the protests aren't bad, but you know, um, and it's, it, I, I'm happy to continue forward with this because I still think that it's very necessary. It is. And yeah, yeah, so. Lisa, yeah. thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Everybody reach out to her. She just offered to give you all an hour of free business consulting. Like, come on. Like, you have to reach out to her. Um, thank you again. Thank you to everybody who tuned in. And we will see you on Monday with Valerie talking about small weddings and how to um, apply them to your business model without uh, it affecting it. So just look for that graphic and we'll see you on Monday. Bye everybody. Bye-bye. Okay. So hold on. So, okay. Boom. No, wait.